Hello, New York. <laughs> You've met We're Bonnie. So happy this to is be Valerie. Here. Yes. Um, well, uh, I, I apologize for starting with something that's probably a familiar question to you, but who, where did this begin? Did it begin with you or with you? Or how, how did you meet? How did this get off the ground? Um, it started with me because I worked for Chelly at the Tivoli when I was 16 years old, 15, 16, when it was, I guess, legal to work. And I decided I wanted to be independent. And so I wanted a part-time job. And, you know, my mom said, oh, you know, I'll help you. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> and she was a friend of Chelly's. And... Um, Chelly had the, the screenings on Sundays, the Greek mm -hmm. film screenings on Sundays, and so I worked the ticket booth. And um, ever since then, my dream was to make a film about her. Um, you don't forget her so easily. <laughs> <laughs> and when Valerie first approached, um, I was very reluctant because I, I always felt people would just exploit the whole thing. But... Um, because of her personal connection to my mother and whatever, was very happy to become part of the project. And I'm very happy that she did it. Yeah, I was going to ask you just that question. That in the hands of another filmmaker, this could have been sort of a questionable portrait, I guess. Um, but it's, it's very warm, and it, it tells a story of a time and place so vividly. My gosh. Um, she's... She's such an unlikely character. You get that over and over. <laughs> um, but also not. There's a certain kind of survivor that just does things like this. And I thought you might talk about her in those terms. Oh, um, about my mother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, about... <laughs> um, uh, excuse me, in terms of how? how? Of just, you know, in terms of making making a business out of almost nothing in such a tough place. Yes. She, um, my mother always, always worked, always was involved. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> now it sounds very loud. Is it too loud? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, even in Greece, she, she worked, which women were not supposed to do. Um, she had her uh, business in competition with her first husband, he had a refrigerator business, uh, an icebox. They didn't have refrigerators in those days. And she went to France and um, imported icebox from France and opened a store around the corner from his. And <laughs> um, so she was always, so when she came here, of course, she didn't know the language. She didn't have money. She didn't know anything. She did start with the hot dog stands. And she just slowly, um, she was involved with Greek, with the Greek films, with Greece, very interested in Greece. She had the Greek films, and then when those weren't successful, she went into the adult films, mm -hmm. and, and then the restaurant. She just, she just evolved. She, did, she, she just did whatever she had to do to survive. And for her, it was, it was, it was she, she, she had joy in doing new things and discovering things and just being involved with everything. Tough old Greeks yes. are indestructible. My own family, I can tell you. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what is it with Greeks and business? They, they dive into business like nothing else. Do you have any thoughts about this, either of you? Um, I think they, they're just very um, resourceful. And um, they just want to you know, make things they want to create things. Mm -hmm. So whether it's in business or in art or you know wherever, they, they, they're constantly wanting to do something. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, when it comes to the States, it's because they come here as immigrants. And why do you, you know, why are you an immigrant? To, you know, to create something better, better, you know, a better life, let's say. <clears throat> but I think always they're, they're, they're quite resourceful. Greeks are, mm -hmm. I would say. It's super practical. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny because they have this thing where they say, you know, it's a patenda, you know, which means like you figure out ways of how to um, uh, make things work and then you can label it a patent. 
but uh, you know, on a familiar basis. Mm -hmm. So they they kind of joke around about things like you know, like they're always kind of trying to be very resourceful. Yeah, yeah. Make something out of whatever you got. Yeah. And then make a buck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That uh, that and the food through this movie. <laughs> There's so much food in this movie. <laughs> very important. It really is. Um, she never went back to Thessaloniki. Never. never. She never did. Um, she ne and she never spoke about mm -hmm. her past or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but she had saved, which I discovered after she died. She had, there are at least 150 letters that were written to her from her family while she was still in Greece, dating from 19... 32 to 34. She was in Athens. She, she was not in Salonika. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's just fascinating to see what her life was like then, which, which was really not very different than what her life was here in America. Mm -hmm. Everybody went to her for everything. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. I hope to put it in a book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was good. Good. It, did she talk romantically about Greece, or would, was it all shut out at all? Because I know, I mean, it, you know, she had the additional monstrous, monstrous memories of the Holocaust. But what I remember from my own Greek family is that they sort of they spoke very warmly about it, but they didn't want to go back. They didn't want to visit again. At the same time, she, she visited, mm -hmm. but Athens, oh, not not to Salon, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. not to Thessaloniki. No, no. Um, in terms of the movie making, uh, I am curious how you came up with the idea, or who came up with the idea for all the little animations. Um, the animation? Yes. Oh, the animation was fantastic. I mean, it was like, we started out, I started out thinking about, you know, having animation because we didn't really have enough material of Shelley. Sure, it gets you between, the, through the, you know, yeah, between the pieces. Yeah, and so that you do our wonderful producer from Canada, Ed Bearveld, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who was absolutely fantastic, and you know, in the whole process of this, you know, of the making of the film, um, at some point said, you know, I have money for, you know, what do you want to do with it? And you know, do you want to do? I said, yeah, I'd love to do animation. You know, like I wanted to do animation with this film because I don't know how else we're going to show Shelley. You know, mm -hmm. like I mean, we needed more so um, much film visuals. And he came up with it, and it was what, absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. And is someone doing her voice, or is that all old tapes? Um, the, it's the quite funny, because it, it's really interesting, because, I mean, yes, it's Chelly mm -hmm. from the home videos. Right, of course. But then it's also Don. Mm -hmm. It's also David, her grandson. Mm -hmm. Because everyone in this family is... Um, you know, like they're actors. I don't know, uh -huh. like they're, they're <laughs> So they and they all love, um, you know, imitating Chelly. <laughs> so, you know, like it would be a, a a great thing to just sit down and look at the film and try to figure out who is actually, mm -hmm. um, you know, imitating Chelly at that particular moment, <laughs> because I I think it's so well edited <laughs> by Rob and I, uh, you know, um, Ruzik who did. You know, like we have a great Canadian crew and also Aaron, our archivist, you know, mm -hmm. like, who's, you know, like found some absolutely fantastic material, mm -hmm. footage from New York. Mm -hmm. um, do you have plans for all her, her papers and the photographs and everything? It seems like that's museum material. Eh? Well, so, some of her papers I'm going to donate to the museum in Salonica. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, good. Um, is uh, I know you have that shot of the the building now, the Eros uh, as, as a pub. Um, is it is there still an apartment up there? No. Oh, <laughs> I was so hoping yeah, it was no. still an apartment. It's more restaurant. <laughs> oh, all right, you know, <laughs> tragic. Yeah. Um, I had one last question that I wanted to ask you, and then I thought we would open it to the room, but. What do you feel like you take most from her, you know, in terms of your personality or, or just your, you know, makeup as a person? Well, I wish I could take a lot more than I have <laughs> taken. I haven't, but what she has taught me was that anything is possible. And I just tend to think that 
disaster is more possible than good things, <laughs> where she always thought good things were possible. <laughs> It's true. Although that's a very Greek world too, <laughs> way of thinking too. You know, drama, catastrophe. Drama, drama, fast drama. catastrophe is coming. <laughs> yes, and we'll get through anyway. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, questions from the room. Um, what's the story of Dino? Well, I'll leave that to the filmmaker. <laughs> um, Dino. Um, Kind of, uh, kind of went off on his own, and um, I didn't find it really helpful to telling the story because he was very involved with himself, and uh, very kind of, you know, like I mean, it was. I'm sorry to say this, but a very typical Greek man. <laughs> uh. Uh, his son is very nice. His son is very nice, and that's why he's in it. But, you know, like, <laughs> I, 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 you know, like I can't really, I, I, you know, I don't know what to say. It, it's just that um, he was too, you know, like, into himself, and um, he was God, basically, and she was nothing, which is fine for him, but it wasn't my story which is what I wanted to tell. He's recently deceased. He just died two weeks ago. Yeah, it was very sad, yeah. It, it's just that we were brought up, I guess, not to make judgments about things. And she was honestly making a living the best way that she could at the time. and. Um, as I said, it was a progression. She, she tried it with Greek films, but then the theaters were there and the Greek films weren't working. So what could she put in the theaters that would work? I just think she was a, a force bigger than life and we just were <laughs> captured by it. Yeah, she was the glue. You know, some families, when they're sort of have it tough, fracture. You know, they get scattered, and, and some really band together, and it draws them tighter. And that sounds like maybe how it went for you. Mm. Um, question for Valerie. Um, I love the tempo. It started out, and it, it was, the whole thing was engaging. It was like, I, was, I, I thought, oh, God, I'm going to need coffee to stay awake, especially after the nice wine we just had over at the restaurant. But my question is, um, Shelley was a kind of a lover, and she was a fighter. Did she uh, fight, or, or and maybe a question for you too, is did she fight when, when Giuliani came with his, you know, might is right, and clean up the city, and get, and get all the bums and homeless people off the streets? Did she fight? Giuliani, and what happened with the theaters? Uh, yes, she did, but at, it was at the, the, at the time Giuliani was putting on most of the pressure, my mother had become ill. Oh. And um, so that fell on me and my sister at the time. Right. And, and we, she had died bef before we had closed the theater. I w it would have been great if she, wanted, if she could have uh, fought back. Oh, she did. She <laughs> she did. <laughs> I mean, she. Yeah, she didn't think it was right. <laughs> I can only imagine what she said about Giuliani. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she starts with M. Ends with A. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ninety-four. And when did you start the film? I think it was about, um, what are we now, 2022? I think it was about 18, 2018. It's about had, five. had you been in, stayed in contact with the family up until then? No, not at all, nothing. Oh, wow. Nothing. Yeah. No, but, you know, once you've met Shelley, it's difficult to forget her. It, you know, it's just, it just imprint, it, like there's an imprint there, and uh, it was, quite forceful, you know, like 
her presence was really, and it was something that I wanted to do for many years. You were at the Tivoli in the 60s? In 72. Cool, cheers. Um, uh, yeah, so I was, m the brief question is, uh, how did you navigate telling her story with nuance of both valorizing her as a figure and also with by maintaining that tension of like the w complicated experiences you have such you had like f as in the issues you faced when um, you felt like she didn't understand what you were going through uh, for example with that lawsuit right and and I felt like this story was really well told in holding that tension together for myself, all I can say is that um, I spoke of my mother honestly, and that's, you know, she, you never knew what you were going to get with her. And um, uh, and you just lived every experience because you, you knew no matter what, she, she was there. It was a, she could do anything. Everything would be okay. And even though I believed she didn't understand and that it wouldn't, maybe it wasn't going to be okay, what was she going to do? I, I don't really know how to answer it, to tell you the truth. <laughs> um, I might not be getting your point correctly. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, basically, this um, Chelly was in my mind for many years because at 15 when I, you know, like when she kind of became like a reality because I would always hear about her from my mother but then when I worked at the Tivoli, it seemed, you know, she became more, you know, she took shape and she was really a person that was, you know, independent and strong and dynamic and so forth and so on. So um, I guess she became a, um, you know, something that I kind of admired, you know, that there was this woman who had strength, who could stand up, uh, you know, like to whoever she had to deal with. And that was very exciting for me as a 15, 16 year old at the time. And um, I guess it's just like romantic things that stay with you through your life. And um, I think I felt comfortable as I got older to be able to make a film about her. But I carried her with me, basically. She was imprinted on my, you know, like consciousness. Well, first of all, the editor is fantastic. Uh, Rob Ruzik, I think he's like wonderful. Um, but um, basically, we worked in a way that, um, let me see how to put this. We wanted to tell the story of someone who, um, you know, with her good parts and her bad parts, mm -hmm. it wasn't about, you know, like um, making her like this, you know, saint or anything like that. It, 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 you know, because everyone has a good side and a bad side. So, uh, you know, we, that was important. And then, you know, like, you know, when you have a character like her, it's very easy. I mean, there's very little you have to do, as far as I'm concerned, to embellish it. It's basically just trying to stay as close as possible to who the person was. You might say, I mean, I'm, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but the answer to both those questions is that people who are that tough sometimes are complicated <laughs> and not always easy. But that's what makes and it wonderful. That, that's just what I was going to say. <laughs> and that makes the portrait much richer. Anyway, Very congratulations. I, uh, we, we have to wrap it up, but um, congratulations. It's a wonderful movie. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.